In mathematics, a real-valued function defined on an interval is called convex if the line segment between any two points on the graph of the function lies above or on the graph. In a Euclidean space of at least two dimensions, equivalently, a function is convex if its epigraph is a convex set. Well-known examples of convex functions are the quadratic function and the exponential function for any real number x. Convex functions play an important role in many areas of mathematics. They are especially important in the study of optimization problems where they are distinguished by a number of convenient properties. For instance, a convex function on an open set has no more than one minimum. Even in infinite dimensional spaces, under suitable additional hypotheses, convex functions continue to satisfy such properties in, as a result. They are the most well understood functionals in the calculus of variations. In probability theory, a convex function applied to the expected value of a random variable is always less than or equal to the expected value of the convex function of the random variable. This result, known as Jensen's inequality, underlies many important inequalities. Exponential growth is a special case of convexity. Exponential growth narrowly means increasing at a rate proportional to the current value, while convex growth generally means increasing at an increasing rate. Definition. Let be a convex set in a real vector space and let f, x r be a function. f is called convex if, f is called strictly convex if, a function f is said to be concave if minus f is convex. Properties. Suppose f is a function of one real variable defined on an interval, and let is the slope of the purple line in the above drawing. Note also that the function r is symmetric in x1, x2, f is convex if and only if r is monotonically non-decreasing in x1 for any fixed x2. This characterization of convexity is quite useful to prove the following results. A convex function f defined on some open interval c is continuous on c and Lipschitz continuous on any closed subinterval. f admits left and right derivatives, and these are monotonically non-decreasing. As a consequence, f is differentiable at all but at most countably many points. If c is closed, then f may fail to be continuous at the endpoints of c. A function is midpoint convex on an interval c if this condition is only slightly weaker than convexity. For example, a real-valued Lebesgue measurable function that is midpoint convex will be convex by Sierpinski theorem. In particular, a continuous function that is midpoint convex will be convex. A differentiable function of one variable is convex on an interval if and only if its derivative is monotonically non-decreasing on that interval. If a function is differentiable and convex then it is also continuously differentiable. For the basic case of a differentiable function from the real numbers to the real numbers, convex is equivalent to increasing at an increasing rate. A continuously differentiable function of one variable is convex on an interval if and only if the function lies above all of its tangents, for all x and y in the interval. In particular, if f equals zero, then c is a global minimum of f. A twice differentiable function of one variable is convex on an interval if and only if its second derivative is non-negative there. This gives a practical test for convexity. Visually, a twice differentiable convex function curves up without any bends the other way. If its second derivative is positive at all points then the function is strictly convex, but the converse does not hold. For example, the second derivative of f equals x4 is f equals 12 by 2, which is 0 for x equals 0, but x4 is strictly convex. More generally, a continuous twice differentiable function of several variables is convex on a convex set if and only if its Hessian matrix is positive semi-definite on the interior of the convex set. 
Any local minimum of a convex function is also a global minimum. A strictly convex function will have at most one global minimum. For a convex function f, the sublay level sets x, f less than a, and x, f a, with a r are convex sets. However, a function whose sublevel sets are convex sets may fail to be a convex function. A function whose sublevel sets are convex is called a quasi-convex function. Jensen's inequality applies to every convex function f. If x is a random variable taking values in the domain of f, then e f. If a function f is convex, and f0, then f is superadditive on the positive rails. Proof. Since f is convex, let y equals 0, then, from this we have, convex function calculus. If f and g are convex functions, then so are in. If f and g are convex functions and g is non-decreasing, then is convex. As an example, if f is convex, then so is, because is convex and monotonically increasing. If f is concave and g is convex and non-increasing, then is convex. Convexity is invariant under affine maps. That is, if f is convex with domain, then so is, where would domain? If f is convex in x then is convex in x provided for some x, even if c is not convex. If f is convex, then its perspective is convex. The additive inverse of a convex function is a concave function. If is a convex real valued function, then for a countable collection of real numbers. Strongly convex functions. The concept of strong convexity extends and parametrizes the notion of strict convexity. A strongly convex function is also strictly convex, but not vice versa. A differentiable function f is called strongly convex with parameter m greater than zero if the following inequality holds for all points x, y in its domain, or, more generally, where is any norm. Some authors, such as refer to functions satisfying this inequality as elliptic functions. An equivalent condition is the following. It is not necessary for a function to be differentiable in order to be strongly convex. A third definition for a strongly convex function, with parameter m, is that, for all x, y in the domain in. Notice that this definition approaches the definition for strict convexity as m0, and is identical to the definition of a convex function when m equals 0. Despite this, functions exist that are strictly convex but are not strongly convex for any m greater than 0. If the function f is twice continuously differentiable, then f is strongly convex with parameter m if and only if for all x in the domain where i is the identity and is the Hessian matrix, and the inequality means that is positive semi-definite. This is equivalent to requiring that the minimum eigenvalue of b at least m for all x. If the domain is just the real line, then is just the second derivative, so the condition becomes, if m equals 0, then this means the Hessian is positive semi-definite, which implies the function is convex, and perhaps strictly convex, but not strongly convex. Assuming still that the function is twice continuously differentiable, one can show that the lower bound of implies that it is strongly convex. Start by using Taylor's theorem, for sum then by the assumption about the eigenvalues, and hence we recover the second strong convexity equation above. A function f is strongly convex with parameter m if and only if the function is convex. The distinction between convex, strictly convex, and strongly convex can be subtle at first glimpse. If f is twice continuously differentiable and the domain is the real line, then we can characterize it as follows f convex if and only if for all x, f strictly convex if for all x, f strongly convex if and only if for all x. For example, consider a function f that is strictly convex, and suppose there is a sequence of points such that, even though the function is not strongly convex because will become arbitrarily small, a twice continuously differentiable function f on a compact domain that satisfies for all is strongly convex. 
The proof of this statement follows from the extreme value theorem, which states that a continuous function on a compact set has a maximum and minimum. Strongly convex functions are in general easier to work with than convex or strictly convex functions, since they are a smaller class. Like strictly convex functions, strongly convex functions have unique minima on compact sets. Uniformly convex functions A uniformly convex function, with modulus, is a function f that, for all x, y in the domain and t, 0, 1, satisfies where is a function that is increasing and vanishes only at 0. This is a generalization of the concept of strongly convex function. By taking we recover the definition of strong convexity. Examples. The function has at all points, so f is a convex function. It is also strongly convex, with strong convexity constant 2. The function has, so f is a convex function. It is strictly convex, even though the second derivative is not strictly positive at all points. It is not strongly convex. The absolute value function is convex, even though it does not have a derivative at the point x equals 0. It is not strictly convex. The function for 1p is convex. The exponential function is convex. It is also strictly convex, since, but it is not strongly convex since the second derivative can be arbitrarily close to zero. More generally, the function is logarithmically convex if phi is a convex function. The term, superconvex, is sometimes used instead. The function f with domain, 0, 1, defined by f equals f equals 1, f equals 0 for 0 less than x less than 1 is convex. It is continuous on the open interval, but not continuous at 0 and 1. The function x3 has second derivative 6x, thus it is convex on the set where x0 and concave on the set where x0. The function on the domain of positive definite matrices is convex. Every real-valued linear transformation is convex but not strictly convex, since if is linear, then this statement also holds if we replace convex by concave. Every real-valued affine function, i.e., each function of the form, is simultaneously convex and concave. Every norm is a convex function, by the triangle inequality and positive homogeneity. Examples of functions that are monotonically increasing but not convex include and g equals log. Examples of functions that are convex but not monotonically increasing include an the function f equals 1, x has which is greater than 0 if x greater than 0, so f is convex on the interval, it is concave on the interval. The function f equals x minus 2, with f equals plus infinity, is convex on the interval and convex on the interval but not convex on the interval, because of the singularity at x equals 0.